one of the, one of the worst things you can do is take a custom woofer or some sort of high powered woofer and put it in a bandpass box. Um, okay, so in the '90s, bandpass was a thing, and uh, Bose uses it to make little shitty one dollar woofers sound pretty good. Um, if you don't own, same with transmission line. That's the same deal. Trying to make a little woofer sound bigger than it is. Um, typically, a, a bandpass box is a sealed box playing into a ported box. That's what people call a fourth order, even though that's that's the wrong terminology. And I do my best just to be patient with people. You know, forgive them, Father, for they know not what they do. Um, bandpass is junk. Uh, and anything you think you can do... In a bandpass box, you can do in a in a boring, yes, it's boring, ported box. Uh, regular ported box is just fine. It does a really great job. Uh, I still use the RE Audio box calculator. You can't use it on Chrome anymore, uh, but you can do RE Audio box calc in Google, and it should come up. You should be able to still use the, I think, the Firefox browser or some even just generic browser like Samsung should, should still be able to use it. But I like this one. I was poking around on the Fosgate site. Uh, the Rockford P3 12 inch is probably one of the most popular woofers that they sell. And again, the standards are going to be about the same. Uh, it says a vented box 1.75, and that's going to go up to about 2.5. And you're, you're going to, the bigger the box, the more you lose power handling. But the compromise is that the box becomes very, very sensitive. So um, I think I talked a couple of videos ago about there, there's no such thing as an IB woofer. That's dumb. Infinite baffle woofer. You can use any woofer, infinite baffle. But again, what you compromise is the power handling. Do they become really sensitive and play like they're supposed to? Fuck yeah, they do. Uh, but again, uh, it depends on what kind of SPL you want in your living room or wh wherever you're doing it. So, but um, uh you know, you don't have to reinvent the wheel and you're not going to, you, you know, I used to think the same thing. Like, oh, I know better. I know how to do a, a bandpass box, get really good SPL. It actually really sucks. And one of the best box programs that I ever used was uh, called Blau Box. Uh, and I'm sure it was like a graduate program for somebody. Um, uh, the problem with Blau Box, though, is it's, it's based in DOS and <laughs> uh, it goes into sleep mode based on clock cycles. So, and it was meant for like, you know, like a 286 uh, or even uh, a 133 megahertz processor. And so on today's processors, it, it immediately goes into, uh, if you if you even have an emulator. But um, real quick, I wanted to just go here. Rockford Fosgate has gone out of their way to try to educate you. And so it's important to listen to these guys. My buddy Wayne, who runs this program, uh, who did a lot of work in their, it's a dumb name, I know it is, Rats. Rockford, come on, you can do better than that. But that's, what, what Wayne did was, he took every subwoofer and then built like, gosh, probably 20 different enclosures and then and then put them inside, um, you know, eat different vehicles to, and then recorded the response. So you can use their language, you can use their 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 tools to create a box. But typically, a 12-inch woofer is going to need Anywhere from uh, about a cubic foot, um, you can go smaller, but there's a compromise. Again, if you do a, I actually love sealed boxes, but I only use sealed boxes when I don't have room for a ported box. Sealed box performs about the same, but it requires, in order to perform like a ported box, a little bit of bass boost and a bit more power. That's the only compromise. Right now, I'm, I use a 18 inch Ari Audio SX in a sealed box and it sounds fucking great it hits the the bottom octaves does it need a little bass boost yes does it need a little more power yes but that's a good compromise because otherwise the box i'd need would be probably eight cubic feet uh for a subwoofer like that to get down to the bottom octave that i want so but use the tools that you have don't you know i've run into installers that these are quote unquote professional people just meaning they do it for a living not like professional acting. But um, I had made a uh, Soundstream XXX woofer for somebody, 18. I said, put it in a, a ported box from three cubic foot, no bit, no bigger than four and a half. Because if you go, once you go bigger than four and a half, 
it unloads and it, and you're kind of wasting energy. Um, I think I pulled up, there it is. So the, that woofer, the Soundstream triple X also known as the X three, uh, the way that Soundstream builds it is kind of shitty, but if you rebuild it with a, a good coil, like this coil from TC sounds, um, you can look down here. Um, and again, it makes the same recommendations. In fact, Tilo makes recommendations about, uh, using a, a, a passive radiator and some of the rules. There's lots of information about there. Again, educate yourself. It, these guys never, never recommend bandpass because it's junk. It's garbage. It's for shitty woofers. Do I still sell bandpass woofers? Yeah, because I got them super cheap and people s still like them. I usually give people a three strike rule. Like I'll try not to sell you something that you want and I think is bad for you three times. After the third time, I'm selling you a fucking epicenter, even though you, you think you need it, even though you don't. And it was it was designed for tape. It's designed for cassettes. Do you have a cassette deck? No, I do. And all I listen to is Tony Robbins. So you don't need it is what I'm saying. But, you know, poke around there, ported or sealed. That's all you need. Is that boring? Yes. Do you think you're going to reinvent something? Probably. But, you know, that's a huge bet that you're making on that dumb band pass. Uh, the other thing is like, read about bandpass. If you really want to read something, it's, it's good to learn, but it's in an application. You're talking about the only time I've ever seen a bandpass work was from my mentor, uh, Mike Quesada. He had a, uh, gosh, it was probably like a 92 hard body pickup truck, very small. And he had an extra, uh, Rockford 18 that, um, uh, he it was like a scratch and dent like you you can't really sell it so you want to use it and so what he did was he did a dual reflex which is which is a real sixth order right it, you when you talk about orders you're talking about the slope and you, you the the steeper the slope the the worse it is because then it acts like a switch on and off like people go oh i want a 24 or 36 uh db slope no you don't because then the, the it's like the speaker comes on and off uh, at that frequency. So you don't actually want to do that. Again, read about crossovers, read about all the different kinds and the, the slopes and, and what they are. All that is in the loudspeaker cookbook. Is that a lot of information? Yeah. And it took me about 18 months to two years in the nineties to really understand it. And you should do the same fucking thing. Um, I'm not asking you to go to school. I'm not asking you to go to college and spend $40,000 to become a barista. Don't be that person. I'm just buy the fucking book used or new or whatever, but read, 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 and read it till you understand it and understand what these guys are talking about and, and go from different manufacturers, uh, that are good. Uh, some of these new companies, they don't give a shit, dude. They just, they're like, Oh, put it in this and this and this and this and this. Uh, this is where, um, even, even JL audio starts talking about some good sense when applying, audio. Like I posted one of their, uh, seminars cause it was really good information. Um, do I like their products? Of course they're great. Are they expensive? Fuck yeah. I would never buy them. So but it doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't change the, the physical characteristics of the universe. So if you know the physical characteristics of the universe, then you can work within reason. And then you can realize like I did in the 90s, that you're wasting your fucking time with this. Anything you, again, I'll say it again. Anything you think you can do in bandpass, you can do in a ported box in less space and less guessing. And always remember that a bandpass box is a sealed box playing into another box, right? So from the get-go, you're just taking a sealed box and then you're tuning it to one frequency, right? By using the outer box. So you're really listening to a port which is the dumbest thing in the world because you got a perfectly good woofer there that you can just put in a, a an extra large sealed box, right? And and watch what happens when you put it in an extra large sealed box. It tends to unload near the FS. Um, again, then you don't need as much equalization, right? Because it's already super sensitive down to those frequencies. Study, study, study. Um, I, I don't really like WinISD, by the way. It's a free program, yes, but... Um, it requires too much data. Uh, you don't need all those numbers. The, the, the real number that you just need is, I'll go back to TC sounds. It looks prettier. Uh, the real numbers that you need are the QTS, the FS, and the VAS. That's it. The, the QTS tells you how peaky it is, 
And I use the old fashioned rules, which is if it's less, it's if it's 0.5 or less, that's a that's it's better in a sealed box. If it's 0.5 or greater, it's better in a ported box. And again, that's only a recommendation. It's not a, a have to. Uh, no matter which way you go, there's going to be a compromise. And I forget the name of the guy, but there's a there's a bunch of rules of physics that you have to follow in order to make things work. Okay, and I want you guys to follow that. So, um, yeah, very low QTS. So, um, and what's funny is what that means is that these are actually really peaky. They'll have a really high peak. Um, and I know you're taught the opposite, but once you put it on the the tester, you'll see what I'm talking about. So what these guys tend to do, these really heavy duty woofers, is whatever frequency you're going to port them at, they're really good at that frequency. And so that's why you actually want to be real careful because the deeper that you put it, uh, it's kind of a waste. Typically anything below 30 hertz, there's not really any music down there. For home theater, that's different uh, because you're going to play explosions and things like that and you may want that. And you also have the room for a larger box so that you can accommodate that woofer to play those low frequencies. But... Um, uh, again, read this. This is uh, this is in the Internet Archive. So, if you've never seen it, uh, it's uh, archive.org. It's a not-for-profit that basically um, has little robots that crawl the internet and record every website that was ever made. Uh, for the most part, sometimes they can't get past a, a gateway, like if if a web if a website is made in Flash or something like that, it, it won't play it or whatever. But it's really great to look back and and look up different models like the old Cove uh, subwoofers that were made by Concept. We bought the uh, Concept out, so we got to see a lot of Cove stuff. And I, I wanted to know what their nomenclature was, uh, what they qu quoted the power and things like that. And I used the Internet Archive, so check that out. But anyways, it's time for dinner. Uh, and I love you guys. Steady, steady, steady before you build a box, okay? Or even just, you know, if you get bored or, if you, you know, you're, uh, uh, you're impatient, right? That's, you learn patience. Um, Make it just a fucking sealed box and then play around with it and see what happens, okay? But um, if somebody's out there and can make an emulator for um, Blahbox and then help me go into DOS and, and remove the timeout feature, I would love to use Blahbox again, uh, which was from uh, Blahpump. It was a free DOS program from Blahpump. Anyways, talk to you later.